Good afternoon, football fans. Welcome to Bishop Conley High School for Week 7 football between the hometown Cougars and the visiting Blue Hills Warriors. I'm Evan Massoud here with Fred TV Sports on Channel 9. This being the final regular season game of 2015. It is senior day here at the Karen Track and Stadium. Cougars senior player is being announced now for the football team. That's number four, the quarterback, Kevin Sullivan, a co-captain, one of four. Number three, Trey Morris, the second captain, wide receiver. 59, Adam Deliker, the third captain. He is a linesman. Number 80, Sean O'Connor, tight end. 6'6 six, six is Sean O'Connor, one of the tallest players on the roster. Actually, the tallest player on the roster. Adam Palameni, number 70, a linesman. Number 68. Number 72, Jack Schnur, a linesman. That was number 63, Eric Tompkins, fullback. Number 52, that's Trevor Reese, the fourth captain for the Cougars. He's a linesman. Number 22, Trent Rodericks, wide receiver. Not dressed for today's game, so he'll, he is not going to see action on the final game of the season. Those are your 2015 senior class of the Cougars. And now the captains will line up for both sides and head out to midfield to see who will receive and who will kick after the coin toss. So again, we'll run down the captains for the Cougars. It's number three, Trey Morris. Number four, Kevin Sullivan. Number 52, Trevor Reese. And number 59, Adam Deliker. For the visiting Blue Hills Warriors, captain number three, Noel Francois. Captain number nine, Keith Reisfelder. And captain number 12, Austin Conley. And here's an interesting for you, one for you. Reisfeller and Conley both listed as QBs, and they are both senior captains this year. Very rare to see two, two, cap, uh, two captains and two quarterbacks with the same graduating class.
captains exchange pleasantries. Bishop Conley has won the toss. They elect to defer and go on defense to begin this ball game. So again, the Cougars come in riding a perfect season. They are 6-0 here heading into this week seven game against the 5-1 Warriors. This is the final regular season game of 2015. And it is a league game that will decide the Mayflower League title. The Cougars want to remain perfect and take the crown. Blue Hills looking for what would be the biggest upset of the season. Playoff seedings will be announced later this week. So be sure to like and follow our Fred TV Sports Facebook page. We will have updates with all of the Fall River Tournament teams, not just football. We'll have all of the teams listed later this week once the regular season officially comes to a close. Uh, the, the other sports will continue through the end of this week and seedings will come out for those sports uh, the first week of November. So uh, but football should be out later this week and as soon as any, t any pairings are announced, we will have them on that Facebook page. So again, facebook.com slash fredtvsports. Harold Beckford teeing up the ball. Earl Jones and Kyle Howard, number two and number 25, back deep for the Warriors. They'll receive from right to left. 50 degrees at game time, cloudy skies. We don't expect to see the sun this afternoon and a slight easterly breeze. Not as windy as last week when we were here, but much cooler without the sun. Matt Cliff set to kick it away, and he gives it a good boot. That's gonna go into the end zone for a touchback. One of the best kickoffs we've seen all season across the board. Last week against Diamond, the Cougars went on the ground on the kickoffs, and they played the bounce game. This time, Cliff sends it all the way down the field. It's a touchback, and Blue Hills will start from the 20. And it's a running play on first down. It's a short gain on first down. About two yards. It'll be second and eight. Reisfelder under center, hands it off again. And another good stop by the Cougars defense. Aside from the uh, perfect record for Bishop Conley, we should also mention that the defense is on quite a run. Three straight shutout victories for Bishop Conley. And now the defense will have the yardage in their favor on third and long, looking for a three and out to open up the game.
Third and seven. Reisfelder back to pass, going down the field, and that is going to be very long, about five yards ahead of the nearest receiver. That was intended for Marignac Lubin. And the defense of Conley gets the three and out they were looking for after they defer. And the offense will come out on the field after Blue Hills punts it away. Good snap for the Warriors. The punt is off. It's a short kick, though. And falling on it is Trey Morris just across the 40. So great field position for the Cougars on their first drive here. They spot it right at the 40-yard line of Blue Hills. So a short field for Conley as they begin their first drive of the game. Plenty of options for Sullivan on this first snap. They hand it off. No, Sullivan keeps it himself. He had three in the backfield. Sullivan decides to keep it. He'll pick up about three or four on that first run. That's Connor Brown, number 24, Cameron Reese, number 28, and Jay McClure, number six, surrounding him. It's Reese in the backfield. McClure in motion now. So that frees up the right side. They give it to Reese, and Reese has a hole, and Reese is tripped up, though, across the 30. That should be good for the first down. Good tackle by the Warriors. That could have been a lot more yards for Cameron Reese. Instead, tripped up, but it is good for the first, so the Cougars move the chains. First and 10 from the 30. They give it to Reese again. Almost lost it on the handoff, and Cameron Reese is gone to the end zone for the touchdown. A 30-yard scamper, and the Cougars strike first just three minutes and two seconds into the game. Three plays, a 40-yard drive, capped by the 30-yard rush for Reese. Matt Cliff makes it, or right, it'll stay six to nothing as that one went wide to the left. So Cliff over one on the extra point. Six nothing Cougars. So good stop for Conley. They have not trailed very much this season and they'll start this game off ahead. Beckford tees it up. Cliff will get set to kick it away from the 40. We'll see if uh, kickoff number two for the Cougars is just as good as the first one. I'm not kidding when I say that was really one of the best kickoffs we've seen all season long. Cougars have always been a fairly solid kicking team. Oh, it's going to be Beckford this time kicking off. They go with a squib kick. It's going to go out of bounds, and that's a flag. I'm not sure what the, uh, the thinking was there for the Cougars. Cliff had, had such a great kickoff to open the ball game. I'm surprised that they went with Beckford. So that's going to give Blue Hills great field position on their second drive of the game.
And the ball will be spotted at the 39 yard line of Blue Hills. So better field position than they had on their first drive. Not as good as Conley had, but still pretty good. Starting close to midfield. That almost looked like a direct snap to Noel Francois. The quarterback, Reisfelder, just spun back, but I did not see him hand it off. So nice first play from scrimmage on this drive, about a yard short of the first. Maybe even a little less than a yard. First down marker, it's the 49. Ball spotted at the 48 and a half. Reisfelder under center again. This time he will hand it off. Forward progress should count. That'll take the Warriors to the 50 and good enough for a first down. Actually, they cross into Cougars territory to the 49 of Conley. So the Warriors get their first first down of the afternoon. We play 10 minute quarters here in D6. We are, four, we are three minutes into this one. Blue Hills hands it off again, and that is Francois on the carry. A gain of about six yards. So I need to correct myself, that touchdown for Bishop Conley came just, uh, just over two minutes into the game, not three minutes into the game. I had the 11 minute clock in my head from uh, the Durfee football game that we did this weekend as well. Durfee plays 11 minute quarters. So 10 minute quarters here in D6. We'll blame it on the cold, some of the neurons getting frozen early this year. <laughs> oh, man. It is my goal in life to make our cameraman Gary Leet laugh, and Noel Francois is not making the Cougars fans laugh. A mad dash to the end zone to tie up the ball game. It'll go in the books as a 44-yard touchdown rush for Noel Francois. It is six to six. This is something we kind of expect all afternoon. It's probably gonna be a back and forth game. Both teams at the top of the league playing strong. For Conley though, they don't like seeing that. The Cougars allowing points for the first time since week three. The Warriors are going for two. They have a number 87 wide open here. Andrew Bryant on the right side. Trey Morris has to come over. And now Francois open. Francois will take it. And he is across the line for the two-point conversion. Blue Hills leads it eight to six. So two touchdowns in the opening four minutes of this game. If that's any indication it's going to be a real barn burner before we're done. So a rarity for Bishop Conley. They will have to play from behind early in this football game. As I said earlier, not the norm. Cougars have not trailed very much this season at all. And they find themselves in a very different spot. Backford and Morris back deep for the Cougars. Blue Hills will kick off for the first time in the game. That's number 87, Andrew Bryant, who will kick the ball off. The ball has fallen off the tee. I don't think he notices that. Oh, they go with the flat. Wow, they didn't have it teed up. That's really uh, interesting. I didn't realize you could actually even do that. Never seen that before. Beckford gets dragged down. Forward progress will count here, though, so... Beckford was able to get to the 33-yard line, according to the linesman. I have never seen the, never seen the ball teed up like that. So 
So the Cougars will take over from the 33. But again, a different, uh, different look there for the Warriors. Teeing the ball up, laying it horizontally on the tee. Sullivan keeps it. Sullivan dragged down after a short gain. And that was Francois on the tackle. So number three, Noel Francois of the Warriors doing it all right now. Four yard pickup there, brings up a second and six. Sullivan passing to Chathan Nera, and that one was out of reach. That'll bring up third down. Actually ends up being about more like seven yards to gain. Scoreboard says six, we'll go with it. it looks a little more like seven on, from the naked eye. But we'll call it third and six for the Cougars. After the Warriors showed they can storm right back and score. This is a pretty big down here early in this game. And Sullivan has some room. He is across midfield, still on his feet. He just won't quit. <laughs> wow. What a great run for Kevin Sullivan. Taken out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Boy, it looked like he was going down about three different times, and he just refused to let up. So Conley with a big burst right there, thanks to the QB, moves the chains of first and 10 from the 32. High snap, Sullivan gets it to Reese, who had the touchdown to open the game. Reese will pick up about two. Mark it down at the 30, so it is a pickup of two. Brings up second and eight. Connor Brown gets the handoff this time and he goes tumbling down to the turf. That's gonna be close to a first. We'll see where the knee went down. They spot him back a yard short. Conley not huddling up, going right back to the line on third and one. Chathan Nara and Trey Morris on the right side. They hand it off to Reese, and Reese has the first down. Reese has more. Reese has himself. Does he get to the end zone? It's so close. They mark him down just shy of the goal line. Almost had number two of the afternoon. It's going to be first and goal from what looks to be the four-yard line. Conley looking to take back the lead. Reese gets the snap and Reese is taken down. That'll bring up second and goal. Anthony Nalen, the new head coach for the Cougars, wanting to switch up the formation. Chathan Nera all alone on the right side. Now coverage is there for him. Reese in the backfield. They do hand it to Reese. Reese trying to turn in, and he's going to be taken down just shy again. Third and goal from about the two-yard line. Some changes here. Brown coming back in. McClure coming back in. Chathan Nera on the right side again. Looks like uh, Cameron Reese is still in there as well. McClure in motion. They get it to Reese. And Reese can't get to the end zone. Great stop by the Warriors. We'll see if Conley decides to go for it, if they'll try for the three points. 
Whichever way they do it, if they score, they will take the lead back. It's just a matter of how much. It's fourth and goal from the two. I'd like to see the Cougars run a different play here because right now the Warriors know they just need to look for number 28, Cameron Reese. So I'd like to see a little different play here on fourth and goal. This is a big touchdown. Sullivan has it. Sullivan almost trips. Passes to the end zone for the touchdown. Jay McClure comes down with it. Two-yard catch in the end zone. Conley back ahead. Sullivan tripped on the grass here, must have hit a divot or something. And uh, that could have been devastating for Bishop Conley instead. Gets the pass off, McClure makes the catch. Cougars back in front, 12 to eight. And they're gonna go for two to try to make it 14 and get back the extra point that was missed by Matt Cliff. Sullivan has it. Sullivan will scamper his way. Does he make it in? They say no. Oh my goodness, that was real close. Sullivan getting up across the goal line. They say that he was down before reaching the goal line. That was very close. Of course, our, our angle, we're at a slight disadvantage uh, being at the 50-yard line, so we're, we're looking behind the play. So no good on the two-point conversion. Conley leads 12 to eight. So a busy first quarter you see on your screen, a minute 40 to play in this first quarter. So in this first eight minutes and uh, 20 seconds, we've seen three touchdown drives, two for the Cougars, one for Blue Hills. Things panning out just as we expected them to. And we'll see if Matt Cliff will kick off this time. He is the one teeing up the ball. It had been Beckford the last two times. Cliff kicked off to start the game. Beckford kicked off last time, went out of play. Now Cliff tees it up. We'll see if he decides to kick it away. And it looks like he will. Matt Cliff gets the okay. And he will kick it off. Another good kickoff. Not sure why they went to Beckford on that second kickoff because it didn't pan out for them. And uh, maybe the Cougars learned something from that. A good return for the Warriors taken down across the 30. And a flag. Got some pushing and shoving after the play. We'll see who that is on. It's a personal foul on the Cougars. So that's going to hurt Conley after a good return by the Warriors. Another 15 yards. And the Warriors will start at their own 47-yard line. Coach Nalen not happy at that flag. It was pushing and shoving for both sides, but the flag goes on the Cougars, or against the Cougars, I should say. Big spot for the Cougars defense to show what they're made of after the flag. Blue Hills will run it on first down. That was number 22, Marignac Lubin. A gain of four, taken down right about midfield. Makes it to the 49 of the Cougars after the four yard gain. Second and six. Sixty seconds to play in the first quarter before we switch sides. And a big burst up the middle by Francois. Across the 40 for the first down. Francois, we saw him last year. And uh, he's back this year. Francois is a senior this year. He was a junior last year. And I'll tell you, the two games that we saw him when they when the Blue Hills played Diamond and when they were here against Conley. Really, really tough. Go, 
Reisfelder, oh, takes a hard hit. Sullivan hitting his counterpart square in the head. Helmet to helmet contact there. That's a six yard pickup. Boy, it didn't look like Reisfelder was going to get very far either, and he was able to cut in. He found a, an open seam and he took it. And that'll do it. In the first quarter, the Cougars are ahead, but only by four. They've given up their first points in over three games. After one, they lead it 12 to eight here on their home turf. See Coach Nealon speaking with the officials again. Going back to that personal foul that cost the Cougars 15 yards at the beginning of this drive for the Warriors. Still discuss discussing it, not happy with the call. Unfortunately, there's no redos when it comes to flags. It's one of those accept it and move on and don't do it again type things. So with another 10 minutes on the scoreboard, second quarter about to begin. Blue Hills has a second and four coming up from about the 33-yard line. It's 12 to eight, Bishop Conley. The six and zero Cougars against the five and one Warriors of Blue Hills. I'm Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV Sports, Channel Nine coverage of high school sports. They give it to Francois who had the touchdown run for the Warriors in that first quarter, and he gets stood up shy of the first down. So this will bring up third down. Recapping the scoring, Cameron Reese had a 30-yard run, a 30 -yard rush to the end zone to open the scoring, then a 44-yard rush for Francois to answer the bell, and then the Cougars come right back on their last drive. It ends up being about a two-yard pass for Kevin Sullivan to Jay McClure. Good for touchdown number two for Conley. And that's where we stand, 12 to eight. A third and a long two for the Warriors. They'll give it to Francois. Francois is able to power his way across the imaginary line for a first down. That's a big first down for the Warriors. They'll get to move the chains and inch closer to the red zone. They'll pitch it out again. That is number one at Jacob Haitala. Blue Hills really not thinking about the passing game at all right now. They did have an incomplete pass on their first drive to open the game that forced a three and out. It was a third down pass. It was incomplete. Since then, it's really been all run, all ground game. That's about a six or seven yard pickup. Six yard pickup for a second and four. Ball is at the 20. Francois with it. Francois has a hole. The Warriors will move the chains again. It'll be first and 10 from the 14 yard line. Oh, that's a false start on the offense. And that'll back him up five yards.
I think that was number 22 on the outside there. Lubin, who had jumped the line a bit. Blue Hills has the uh, a gradient going on with the the number, so they fade from uh, from blue at the bottom up to white. So it's kind of hard to see the numbers. Conley and Diamond have the two best jerseys. You can read the numbers so clearly. And the Cougars line stops the run on first and 15. Short gain, if any. They credit the Warriors with about two yards. That's going to set up a second and 13 from the 15-yard line. And we have ourselves a timeout on the field. So while we have that timeout, I want to remind you once again, we do have a sports Facebook page, Fred TV Sports. We have updates throughout the week. We also post our the games that we've done uh, in the, the games that we've done in full. We post them to a Vimeo page and we send the links over to that Facebook page for everybody to see. And uh, over the next week to week and a half, we'll be hard at work bringing you all of the tournament updates, including those who have qualified, their pairings, and results from those games. So be sure to like and follow facebook.com slash fredtvsports. Out of the timeout, second and 13 to go for the Warriors. Ball is at the 15. Conley trying to avoid, avoid falling behind for the second time in the game. Reisfelder under center. They send Lubin in motion. There's a flag. The play was not ruled dead, however, so we know that wasn't a false start. That was an illegal formation. They had two men in motion. You can't do that. That's going to be another, another penalty for the Warriors, and it'll back them up again. Another five yards from the line of scrimmage. So now second and 18. So the Cougars getting a little bit of help thanks to some miscues from the Warriors. Need to take advantage. Six and a half minutes to play before the half comes to a close. Blue Hills hoping to find the end zone again here in the second quarter. Looking to pass is Reisfelder and the pass is complete to number one, Jacob Hightala. That'll erase the penalty yards. It'll bring up third down and long. Third and six officially, so it's a 12-yard pass. They get back the penalty yards and then some. Third and six from the 10. Big spot for the Cougars defense here early in this game. Lubin in motion again. They give it to Francois. Francois stopped at the line. That's Bobby Alves, number 51 on the tackle. That'll bring up fourth down. They credit Blue Hills with a yard of forward progress. So it'll be fourth and five. The Warriors. Going to call timeout, it appears. Head coach Ed Catabia, or Catabia, calling timeout. Wants to make sure that the offense knows exactly what they need to do here on fourth down. They don't want to lose this opportunity. 
Warriors trail 12 to 8 with 5.21 to play in the half. It's fourth and five from inside the 10. Conley got the stop on third down. They'll get to do it one more time. A little reverse. They get it to Lubin. And Lubin is going to be stopped. I think it's going to be short of the first. And yes, it is. Bishop Conley with a big stop on fourth down. There he will take over from about the nine yard line. Conley was stacked up to defend against the run and they read it right. And that was a great play from the Warriors, a gutsy play on fourth and five. The Cougars read it perfectly. So I had said from the nine, it looks more like the seven yard line where Conley will take over. Sullivan looking to pass. Going down the field for Harold Beckford and it is gonna be out of reach. About five or seven yards overthrown. Beckford had good coverage from Kyle Howard as well, but Beckford was open, had the throw been there. Sullivan was going for a a big chunk of yardage there on first down and comes up incomplete. Cameron Reese and Connor Brown out for this snap. Jay McClure still in in the backfield. Wide receiver set up to the right. Sullivan fakes the handoff. He'll take it himself. But a false start. and That's going to back the Cougars up. So Sullivan will essentially be taking the snap from the end zone. And that's where you're going to be careful. Don't want to get sacked or taken down. That'll be a safety. So after the five yard penalty, second and 15. Trey Morris in motion, headed over to the near side left. Headed back the other way now. Fake the handoff, short pass to Chathan Nera to try to free up, look at that move by Chathan Nera. Up the field he goes, taken down at close to the 35 yard line. The Cougars get out of their own end and push it up towards midfield. Trey Morris had everybody confused. Jathan Nera made the catch, pushed off the defender, and took it up the field for another 10 or 15 yards. I like the different look seeing the passing game. Now we have wide receivers left and right. They hand it to Trey Morris, and the ball is loose. That was Jay McClure. Not Trey Morris, number six, Jay McClure, who lost it on the handoff. Sure looked like he had it and it just fell out of his hands. McClure not wearing gloves. And it is quite cold out. You know, we're last week of October. Gotta be wearing gloves. And now McClure on the sidelines. Connor Brown back in there. He'll line up next to Sullivan. And he'll take the handoff. Brown, nice little juke inside. Cuts back in. Look at this run for Connor Brown. Good for another first down. That was a great textbook run there from Brown. Diving in, cutting back, diving back in again and then getting tackled forward. That's important, don't get stood up. Always, oh, that's a hard hit on Brown that time. Taken down right at the 50. I just said don't get stood up and that's exactly what happened to Connor Brown. But he does pick up four yards, bring up a second and six. 3.30 to play on the clock.
Cougars at midfield looking to strike again before the end of the half. They'll also receive the second half kickoff. Brown gets the handoff again. He'll pick up maybe a yard or two at most. They give him two, and it'll bring up third and four. Ball at the 47. Cougars need to get to the 43. McClure back in. Brown stays in. Reese back in. So full accompaniment. Looks like Morris and Nera left and right. Now Brown lined up. As a receiver, they hand it off to Cameron Reese. Cameron Reese has the first down and more. Down the field he goes. Tackled just shy of the goal line. Maybe at the half yard line. Oh my goodness. Great tackle there for the Warriors. It keeps Conley off the board for the time being. Cameron Reese. A yard short of the end zone. Cougars go right back to the line. No huddle. Sullivan will take it. And he is in for the touchdown. The Cougars third of the afternoon. Sullivan's first on the ground. That'll make it 18 to eight. So Conley gets the huge stop on fourth and five deep in their own zone and they storm back up the field. And what was essentially a, uh, about a 93 yard drive, a couple of big plays for large pickups. Kick on its way from Matt Cliff, and that one is through the uprights. 19 to eight the score with 2.15 on the clock before halftime. That was a great drive, that one had it all. Couple of long passes, couple of long rushes. Some short power running as well. Really a good drive for the Cougars. So now the Conley defense We'll need one more big stop here before the half. Blue Hills will have a little over two minutes to play with. Cougars want to go into the half with this 11 point lead, knowing that they'll get the ball back. And it looks like Beckford is gonna do the kicking again. So the Cougars alternating kickers, this is really uh, Something that we don't normally see. Beckford goes on the ground with it again. Falling on it at the 35 yard line is Jeremy Burgess. But again, that kind of squib kick we call it was rolling towards the sidelines. It wasn't sent up the middle. And that's where you get a little nervous if you're the kicker because if it goes out of bounds, that is a flag. Nonetheless, this time stays in bounds. Burgess is able to fall on it. And he fell forward, so they gave him a yard. I had said the 35. It's actually the 36 yard line where Blue Hills will take over. First and 10 for the Warriors. Conley's D made some great adjustments in that last drive. Oh, there's a false start. And that'll back up the offense another five. And the Cougars 12th man starts the you can't do that chant. Little razzing going on as you can expect from the student fan base. I'll tell you one thing is that, you know, not only just here in Fall River, but across the state, the uh, student fan bases for these high school sporting events, it, it's amazing the enthusiasm and the love for sports that is built over time but particularly here in Fall River. 
This team has such a bit. This team, this city, has such a big history with sports. Three-yard pickup brings up second and twelve. And with the running play, that keeps the clock rolling. So we're under two minutes now, minute 45 to be exact. They hand it off to Francois, and Francois taken down behind the line. He comes up kind of slow, too. Not something that the Warriors want to see. He was hit pretty hard. Maybe had the wind knocked out of him. They gave him a yard of forward progress there. I didn't think he got a yard at all. So credit to uh, Francois right there because it sure looked like he was stopped behind the line. Instead, he was able to muster up a yard. Third and 11. Reisfelder going down the field and three Cougars out there defending. The throw was long, uncatchable. It'll bring up fourth and 11. So the Cougars defense gets their second three and out of the afternoon. That'll force Blue Hills to have to punt it away. And Conley will have uh, just under 90 seconds See if they can't grab a few more points before the half comes to a close. Very good at the uh, two minute drill are the Cougars as well. Second punt of the afternoon for Blue Hills. That's a great punt. Beckford has it and he is gonna be stood up. All right, still getting some yards. He'll be fall forward, a nice job by Beckford. Falling forward across the 40 yard line Cougars will have decent field position with a buck 13 on the clock. Sullivan has it, going down the field, looking for Chaitan Nera. There's all kinds of contact. No flags thrown. Kyle Howell leaning on Chaitan Nera. Incomplete, brings up second and 10, it stopped the clock. Cameron Reese takes it and he is gonna be stopped behind the line for a loss of yardage. Under a minute to play now here in this first half. Matt Cliff taking some warm up kicks into the net. Should he be needed for a field goal, but the Cougars need to strike for a big chunk of yards and fast. Coming up on 30 seconds left in this second quarter. Sullivan has the ball. Pressure is coming. He will have a short pass to, that's number 81, Colby Hawes. There's an extra push and there's a flag. That should be a personal foul. Francois in there on the Warriors. We saw that last push by Blue Hills. One would think that that's who it's gonna go on. But both sides pushing and shoving. But the more blatant push came on the Warriors. They're giving personal fouls to both sides, so they'll offset. So 
It stops the clock at 18 seconds. So it'll bring up first down. Cougars did get the first down. They haven't called really many timeouts either, so they do have the opportunity. With 15 seconds, the clock is rolling. Sullivan looking for a quick pass. Down the field, Chaitanera. No, that's number 15, rather. Alex, Alec Kafori, rather. Alec Kafori coming down with it there for the first down. 6.1 on the clock. Cougars call timeout. I think Conley's going to have to take just one shot at the end zone. No way you can kick a field goal from here. Oh, they can't attempt it, of course, but. From the 30, you're looking at over 40 yards for a field goal, and that's just pretty much unheard of in uh, high school football. Six point one on the clock. It'll be first and ten from the thirty-one yard line of Blue Hills. Cougars trying to grab some points at the end of this first half. They've scored two unanswered touchdowns. Good for thirteen unanswered points. Jay McClure heading out from behind the line. Now Beckford spreading out as well. Sullivan going to pass here. Here comes pressure. He escapes. Going to go towards the end zone, and it is going to be caught for the touchdown! Harold Beckford comes down with it, and it was almost picked off. And as time expires, the Cougars grab their fourth touchdown of the afternoon. What a way to end the first half. Sullivan had pressure coming. Beckford able to come down with it after Sullivan escapes. How about that? 31 yard touchdown pass. Sullivan to Beckford and Matt Cliff will try to make it 26 to eight with the extra point. The kick is on its way, and it is through the uprights. And the Cougars end the half with a flurry. 20 unanswered points for Bishop Conley. They lead it 26 to 8 at the end of the first half. Third quarter coming up here on Fred TV. Third quarter about to begin here at Bishop Conley High School on Fred TV Channel 9. 26 to 8. The home team leads it over the visiting Blue Hills Warriors. Evan Massoud with you here. And what a way to end that first half, huh? The Cougars striking as time expires. A 33 yard or a 31 yard catch for Harold Beckford in the end zone. It was in the air the whole time. Kevin Sullivan able to get it off. And now the Cougars get to receive this kickoff to begin the second half. Trey Morris picks it up. Trey Morris scampering across the 40 before he stood up, taken down about the 43 yard line. So a good return for Bishop Conley. The Cougars have scored 20 unanswered points since allowing their first points in over three games. The Conley defense has really stepped up and limited Blue Hills opportunities. And the offense has done their part for sure. So 26 to eight, Conley leads. They go back on offense here to begin this second half. Cougars riding a 6-0 season right now, and if the score holds up, they'll finish in first place in the Mayflower League with a 7-0 record heading into round one of the playoffs. And as we understand it, round one of the playoffs, if the Cougars win this game, will be here, and it will be a night game. Temporary lights will be brought in. First ever night game here at the K-1 
Karen Track and Stadium. And Jay McClure is going to start the second half with a six points for number six. The Cougars down the field. They go on one play. 32 to 8 the score. Unbelievable. 56 yards on the run. It takes one play. Just 18 seconds. Can you believe it? These Cougars are a determined team here in 2015. Matt Cliff, two for three in point after attempts, trying to make it three for four. A line drive kick over the crossbar, through the uprights, it's good. Another seven points for the Cougars. It's 33 to eight. So 18 seconds here in this second half. 6.1 before that last play of the first half ended. So 24.1 seconds, and we've seen 14 points from Bishop Conley. Unreal. So I guess you could say maybe the good news with such a quick strike for the Cougars is the defense won't have to sit on the sidelines too long. They don't have a chance to get cold. They'll stay hot, and they'll head back out on the field. But this has got to be kind of a crushing feeling for Blue Hills coming in at 5-1. and one. If they were to win this game, they would have taken the Mayflower League crown. They still have time, but now they trail by another seven points, and the points are starting to pile up for Bishop Conley. Beckford will kick off here. We've seen Matt Cliff and Harold Beckford trading off. And see, that's the danger with the squib kick. That was picked up by Darius Williams at about the 47 yard line. So Blue Hills starting basically at midfield when we've seen Matt Cliff kick it off a few times. The first kickoff of the game was a touchback. Really would like to see Cliff get back in there and uh, start handling the kickoffs again. It's not that Beckford's doing a bad job, it's just two different looks. And this look, unfortunately, only got the Cougars uh, basically a 13-yard kick because they kick off from the 40. So Blue Hills starting a great field position from their own 47-yard line. Francois on the carry, and Francois will pick up maybe a yard or two. Trevor Reese came up with the football, but Francois was down by contact. Two-yard pickup, second and eight coming up. This is a huge drive for Blue Hills if they don't want to fall too far behind. Going all the way down the field. There's nobody home. Trey Morris there defending. Looked like number 87, Andrew Bryant. Reisfelder throwing that one a little too far down the field. We've seen that a couple times today, actually from both sides. So third and eight coming up for Blue Hills. And this is not four down territory. The Warriors have to get the first down. They want to continue this drive. Cougars looking for a three and out. They hand it out to Lubin. Lubin cutting in. Lubin taken down, shy of the first down, but it's going to be close. They spot him down just past the 45. So we'll say from the 44, they need to get to about the 43. So a fourth and a little more than one. And it looks like Blue Hills is going to go for it. They got close enough. Coach Katabia feeling confident that the team can get this short pickup. Watch out for Francois and Lubin. They give it to Francois. He's got the first down.
That'll move the chains. The Warriors keep the drive alive. They needed the 43, they get to the 42. So first and 10 from the 42 yard line, Blue Hills. We'll keep the offense out on the field. Reisfelder going to pass. This one's going to go out of bounds. Nice catch by the spectator on the sideline. But unfortunately, not suited up for the game and out of play. So incomplete. So the first pass for Bryant on this drive was sent too far down the field. This one, a little too off to the side. So Reisfelder trying to... Uh, find the sweet spot here. Blue Hills has not passed very much in this game and that could be why Reisfeld are just a little bit off right now. Lubin has the handoff. Lubin taken down behind the line. No, still on his feet. Sure looked like he had gone down. Now he will go down for a loss of five. Initially it looked like the knee had gone down on that first tackle. He was able to escape, then eventually taken down again. It's a five yard loss, third and 15 coming up for the Warriors. They get pushed back to the 46 or 47, thereabouts, kind of in between the yard markers. Again, no hash marks on this field. So we just go by, we count by fives. And tackled by, that's, Trevor Reese taking down Jacob Hightala for another loss of yards. Fourth and long coming up for Blue Hills. Warriors are going to have to punt this one away, one would imagine. Not a good spot to go for it on fourth down. Very different from the last time. It'll be Anthony Sansis, number 47, punting it away. The third punt of the afternoon for the Warriors. Another good punt. Sansis has a good leg. Beckford trying to escape a tackle. He cannot. He's taken down at the 25-yard line. Number 66, Marcus Mompoint on point with the tackle. First and 10 for the Cougars. So once again, the Conley defense comes up big. Their only blemish was the touchdown run, a 44-yard run as it turned out for Francois in that first quarter. Since then, they have locked things down. 27 unanswered points, and the offense back out on the field looking for more. Jay McClure. Picks up a couple. McClure got the handoff to open this second half and on that one play, a 56 yard touchdown run for McClure, untouched. And that's why it's 33 to eight. They give McClure four yards, it'll be second and six. Sullivan under center, waiting the snap. This time drops back a bit to pass, and it is incomplete. Good coverage there from Hytala on Trey Morris. Third and six. Much like when I said that Blue Hills needed the first down when they were on offense, really needed that first down to keep the drive going. The defense needs a big stop right here on third and six. And the scoreboard says third and seven, so we'll, we'll go with that. Third and seven for the Cougars. Morris and Nera on the near side. They hand it off to Cameron Reese. Cameron Reese has the first down. Blue Hills defense, no match for Cameron Reese this afternoon.
Of course, we don't keep official stats. We don't have a statistician with us, but based on Reese's afternoon and some of his long runs that he's had in that first half, Reese at the century mark in terms of yardage. He's had a great afternoon. High snap, Sullivan gets the quick pass off, and it's just through the fingertips of Trey Morris. Sullivan had to rush it. There's also a flag on the field. The play was whistled dead. We may have a uh, false start, we'll see. That's a personal foul on the Cougars, and that's going to back them up. 15 yards. That one hurts. So instead of a first and 10, first and 25. Here comes the pass rush. They get the pass off, and that was uh, Alec... Kafori coming down with it. Cougars get about six or seven back. One of the Warriors slow to get up, but walking off under his own power. That looks like uh, number 26. Actually, that's number 20. That was Tristan Cahill. No 26 on this team. Number 20 heading out. Oh, my mistake. That was Dan Pellegrino. That was number 26. Sullivan gets the pass off. Beckford can't come down with it. Nice coverage by the Warriors. It'll bring up third and 20. That personal foul really hurt the Cougars' drive here. They had gotten the first down, and then on first and 10, a 15-yard penalty. Sullivan's going to take it himself. Sullivan cutting back in, has some room. He's grabbed 10 yards. Sullivan with the first down and more across midfield. We've seen this all afternoon. The Cougars with their backs against the wall on a big play, and they come up with it. Third and 20. Sullivan comes down with more than 30 yards. How about that? So the Cougars move the chains once again and convert on a big third down. First and 10 from the Blue Hills, 40. Reese, McClure, and Brown. Oh, Sullivan faked the handoff and talk about a blitz. Three Warriors in his wheelhouse. Deshaun Smith there. One of the three. Along with Trey Blount, number 51. Great pass rushing right there for the Warriors. That'll bring up now a second and 20, 10 yard loss. Sullivan's done a great job this afternoon of escaping any pressure, but Blue Hill's turning it up a little bit here in the second half. Sullivan has protection now, will pass it to Reese. Reese with the catch and run. What a block in the back here. Connor Brown with the key block. 
on Tristan Cahill. Cameron Reese able to scoop by for another first down. Ends up being about a 23 yard pickup, a catch and run. Sullivan to Reese with the key block from Brown. First and 10 from the 26. McClure gets the handoff. McClure up the shoot. Across the 20 into the red zone, shy of the first. Second and two for Conley. Inside the red zone at the 19. They got to get to the 17. Sullivan will be under center. McClure with the handoff again. Oh, McClure spins down. He's tackled at the knees. And that was number 26. Pellegrino back into the game after coming out. It's a loss of a yard, third and three. And one would think up 33 to eight, this is probably gonna be four down territory for Conley. They don't have much to lose. Cameron Reese with the handoff, carries it to the 15. That'll be another Cougars first down. Ninety seconds to play in this third quarter, which has really flown by. They'll line up similar formation again. Sullivan under center, three in the backfield. Spins this time hit. Oh, nice little leap there from Connor Brown. Almost to the end zone, taken down at about the three. That should be good for another first down. It'll set up first and goal. They're gonna spot him at the one yard line. The knee never hit the ground. It was the elbow first on the dive forward. First and goal from the one for Bishop Conley. Again, they've scored 27 unanswered points, trying to add to that total. They lead 33 to eight, under a minute to play in the third. Sullivan hands it off. Connor Brown in for the touchdown. And what was a back and forth game in the first quarter has turned into a blowout here at Bishop Conley High School. That makes it 39 to eight. Matt Cliff will be asked to make it an even 40 points here in week seven. Cliff's fifth extra point attempt. And it is good. Right through the center of the uprights. Four for five is Matt Cliff. The Cougars also did go for a two point conversion that they did not convert on. Maybe one of the only negatives that you could pull from this game. Conley came to play. And this was gonna be their toughest test of the season by far. And now a 40 to eight lead with just over one quarter to play. Cougars looking more and more like they will take this Mayflower League crown and finish the regular season 7-0. and oh. Of course, in the world of sports, anything can happen. We just go with the odds. Make you want to keep watching. Conley set to kick off. 34 unanswered points since that first quarter when the Cougars trailed for only a couple minutes of, of play. Matt Cliff now 
will kick off this time. Again, trading off with Beckford. Cliff has had great kickoffs this afternoon, and there's another one. Bouncing at the 15, takes a bad hop on Kyle Howell. He'll return it before going out of bounds just after the 25-yard line. It's going to be the 27 is where they're going to mark this. We had a busy weekend here in Fall River, this being the final game that we covered this weekend. We also have Durfee football versus Nauset, homecoming night, week seven, with the one and five Hilltoppers against the 0-6 Nauset Warriors. That game is airing on Fred TV Channel 9, along with girls varsity soccer from Durfee. The Lady Hilltoppers hosting the Lady Whalers of New Bedford for the final big three game of the season. A win for the Lady Hilltoppers or a tie would give them the sole big three title. So that game also airing in its entirety on Fred TV Channel 9. So check our listings, fredtv.us, for our complete schedule. You can see when these games are viewable. We also have our sports page, as I've been mentioning throughout the broadcast, facebook.com slash fredtvsports. That's F-R-E-D-T-V sports. We do not yet know who the Cougars will face in round one of the playoffs. That ends the third quarter. It's 40 to eight, Cougars. But again, we don't know who the Cougars will face in round one, but we do know that if this score holds up, there will be a home game here Friday night, first ever game under the lights here at Bishop Conley. Temporary lights will be brought in, and we will play a night game here at the Karen Track and Stadium in round one of the playoffs. As soon as we know, as soon as we know who the Cougars' opponent will be, it will be posted. On the, Fall River, on the Fred TV Sports Facebook page. So be sure to like and follow that page. We will have updates throughout the state tournament, football, soccer, field hockey, volleyball. We will cover it all. It's the best way to stay up to date. The officials reset the field. The teams will switch sides. Final 10 minutes of play here from Bishop Conley High School in week seven. The 6-0 Cougars leading 40-8 over the 5-1 Blue Hills Warriors. Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV Channel 9. We hope that you'll stay with us for the remainder of this one. Blue Hills with a second and eight coming up from the 29. They've been held scoreless since the first quarter when Noel Francois went down the field for a 44 yard touchdown and that is gonna be picked off. Reisfelder throws the pick. The Cougars, Jay McClure picks it off. The Conley defense coming through again. Cougars take over. The officials got it right. McClure had that ball and he was not letting go. First and 10 Conley from the 43. After McClure fumbled earlier in that first half, and then the Cougars were able, they were able to keep the ball, but McClure did fumble. He has been spot on. McClure going down the sidelines before getting tackled out of bounds by Jake Baxter, number 53. You know, it's interesting how, how each stadium here in the city is so different. You know, for Diamond, it's very high up. You get that really over-the-top look at the stadium. Durfee kind of in between. You get to be on the roof, but not as high as Diamond. Here at Conley, we're probably at our lowest 
for um, for filming purposes, but the proximity to the field, you just can't beat it. You can see everything that's going on clear as day. Another first down for Conley. They're across midfield. First and 10 from the 43. McClure gets the hand up. Oh, he is stuffed right at the line. Baxter. Oh, that was Trey Blount, number 51. Just under six minutes left here in this fourth quarter. We apologize for that break in the action. We had some technical difficulties. One of our batteries failing on us. We had to make a quick change out, but since that time, the Cougars have stormed back down the field again. They were at the 43. Cameron Reese took them down inside the red zone. Connor Brown stopped just shy of the goal line. It's second and goal for the Cougars. They lead 40-8, to eight, and they're not done offensively this afternoon. Uh-uh. The Cougars looking to add to their point total so far on the day, and it's going to be Kevin Sullivan taking it in for the touchdown. 46 to 8 the score. Bishop Conley. I can't remember the last time there was a blowout win like this here in Fall River. It's been a long time in the Cougars. Putting it to the Warriors this afternoon. Matt Cliff set for the extra point. And that one is good again. 47 to 8. Now the clock is continuing to roll which is kind of interesting, considering that this is dead time. Amazingly, none of the coaches on the Blue Hill side seeing that and recognizing that. Resetting this field for the kickoff is taken about a minute off the clock. The scoreboard operating official not stopping the clock after the extra point. 3.30 to play and counting. Do I dare say scoreboard gate? Matt Cliff kicks it away. Loose ball is picked up by Howell. And Howell is stopped just shy of the 30 with 3.10 to play. The clock continues to roll. Oh, now finally stops. Maybe a malfunction, not sure. But again, over a minute was lost from the extra point to the kickoff. It was never stopped. Conley fans not complaining. <laughs> the clock really just a formality at this point. Cougars up 47 to eight, under three to play. They are gonna win the Mayflower League this year and they're gonna finish the regular season with a seven and zero record. It's just a matter of Running down the rest of the time here in the fourth quarter. I've been doing these games now for four plus seasons. This is the fourth football season that uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Fred TV and, and uh, FRG TV. And I can tell you right now, this Cougars team, the football program, has gotten better and better each season that we have covered them. Former Hilltopper, Justin Kogler, 
He left at the end of last year, but the Cougars had a great season last year as well. And now head coach Anthony Nalen taking over. And this season, even more of an improvement for the Cougars. I don't know what more you could ask for. Maybe a league championship, a state title. Of course, the last state title that was brought home to Fall River was the D6 boys basketball title that was taken home by the Cougars basketball team in 2013. Jeremy Burgess stood up after about a six yard gain. Under 90 seconds to play in the game. Second and four. And now, 60 seconds left in the regular season. Blue Hills on second and four, hand it off. A two yard pickup, more pushing and shoving. Three yard pickup officially, it'll bring up third and one, under 30 seconds now. Oh, head coach Anthony Nalen just got the Gatorade cooler, the ice bucket. <laughs> Hugs and celebrations starting a little early on the sidelines. 10 seconds in what should be the final play of the game. Trevor Sass on the carry. Five seconds and the Bishop Conley Cougars are Mayflower League champs in 2015. 7-0 regular season record. The Cougars head into the playoffs with all the momentum. I said in the first quarter it looked like it'd be a back and forth game. The Cougars proved me wrong. A blowout here in week seven. 47 to eight, the final score. Conley wins it over Blue Hills. Next game will be this Friday, a home game in the playoffs at night. Temporary lights will be brought in and the Cougars will look to continue this great streak that they are on. Eight points allowed over the last four games combined. The Cougars win the Mayflower League with a 7-0 record. Want to take this opportunity with the regular season ending and the playoffs looming to thank Cesar Gonzalez and Bishop Conley High School, Principal Myron, for their cooperation as always, always giving us the accommodations to do these games. We appreciate their, their help and assistance in making these games possible. Our cameraman this afternoon, Gary Leet, we appreciate you, the viewers, as well. And be sure to like and follow our Facebook page, Fred TV Sports, so you'll know first who the Conley Cougars will be playing in round one. For now, Evan Massoud from Bishop Conley High School. Final score one last time, 47-8. to eight. The Cougars win it over the Warriors. We'll see you soon.